Quote, none of the stars cast by Zack Snyder, including Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, Gal Gadot, Ezra Miller, and Jason Momoa will reprise their roles in the new DC universe. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Aquaman 2. I laughed <laughs> when you sent me the article regarding the fiasco going on with Aquaman <laughs> 2. Listen, the Aquaman 2 movie we've been saying since Jump Street that this is going to be a disaster. And we don't know what this is. Uh, we have some indi- we have some indication of what this movie may be about. Um, if uh, I think Jason Momoa has a statement regarding what it, it, it's about, but um, we've seen the trailer. You've seen, you've heard our thoughts, and yeah, Jason Momoa was drunk on stage, uh, on set. I mean that. <laughs> Listen, Jason Momoa hasn't showed any interest in the W, him being Aquaman since DC Fandom, the first one. Or the second one, I think. How many have there been? Fandom? Two, right? There were two Fandoms. And then. So the second one, I think. The second one. Nothing would surprise me, Brian, about what went on with Aquaman 2. And the drama behind it. Your thoughts on on, on, on on what went on? The article's in Variety. It's by Tatiana Siegel, who's very well connected. So I would probably take most of this as fact and pretty mm-hmm. well sourced. Um, it is highly entertaining, um, but it's also informative because it has stuff not just about Aquaman 2, but about the broader direction of, of DC beyond this. And we got some firmer things of some things we always suspected, but now we're getting confirmation the mm-hmm. aquaman 2 stuff this is tied to the amber heard johnny depp trial where they they basically got a hold of amber heard's therapy sessions and the notes from her therapist include notes about the production of aquaman 2 in which quote <laughs> an intoxicated jason momoa dressed like johnny depp and pushed to have amber heard booted from the role of aquatic superhero Mira. Now, if Jason Momoa really showed up and basically was a drunk Jack Sparrow to Amber Heard's face during filming, that's that's pretty wild. Yeah. I would say to anyone who has seen Momoa, he kind of dresses like Johnny Depp anyway he always yeah. wears a lot of rings and looks like a hipster and like I, I when i read it i was like yeah maybe and like the character is always drinking right in the first movie he's like drinking and taking selfies with those dudes he shows up in the cut scene of flash he's drunk and passes out in a puddle of water yeah yeah i mean maybe it's just method acting i don't know but like this didn't sound like that it sounded, sounds like ptsd a little bit it did. <laughs> the flip side is if it if it had any validity, it would just feed into our whole thesis of the Jason Momoa show took over after this first movie blew up. And this second movie kind of became his production. And if he pulled this kind of diva stuff on the set, that would kind of fit with that image. But at any rate, you had that angle. Then you had Heard's therapy notes also calling out James Wan, the director saying that James Wan was yelling at her that she had detracted so much from the 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 franchise that he couldn't even post on social media about it anymore and the studio was reportedly prepared to fire her and remove her until another individual weighed in and that would be Amber Heard's boyfriend at the time one Elon Musk who reportedly sent a letter threatening to destroy WB to the ground, burn it to the ground if they did not bring her back. So they brought her back and she's wow. in one scene of the trailer and reportedly in very little of the film. Yes. Whew. That's some. Damn, yo. 
I kind of want to see that more than I want to see the movie. Can I see that? Can yeah. I see the footage of of the letter and the onset? Oh, yeah, I want to see the letter. Jason put some Malone crazy music, music behind them. Yeah, Jason <laughs> Malone, today will be the day you almost caught Captain Jack. Sp- <laughs> can I can I see that instead? <laughs> Listen, Jason Moore, man, and I want to get to Jason Moore switching over to Lobo. Because this, to me, Brian, is, it could end up being more of the same or more. I think he has a lot of, could have a lot of range, Brian, under the correct guidance, correct director. I think he did a great job in Dune, but... He seems too comfortable in having these roles and perhaps having too much say over how it's done and how it needs to be portrayed. If it's more and more, I'm not interested. So we'll get to that. The tying off of Aquaman 2 that I think is very damning here, and this confirms Mm -hmm. other members, we have heard reports and we've commented David Zasloff has not really talked about this movie. He's promoted <laughs> ill-advised. He's promoted Black Adam heavily. He's promoted Flash heavily. He's never really mentioned this movie. So this article suggests that the first cut of this movie tested basically the same as Batgirl. So they recut yeah. the whole movie. And the second cut tested exactly the same. <laughs> Which has led to the reports of they recut it again because it supposedly was so bad. <clears throat> and they keep having to do reshoots on it. And it mentions this thing of, quote, this is what I thought was really damning. The movie is like this echo of regimes. It's the last remnant of the Snyderverse and no one wants to take ownership of it. That to me sounds 1000% spot on as to what this movie is going to be and has always been. And why the we thought it was like hot potato. Yes. Exactly. So I think like, I think it'll make more money than the Marvels. But this will be a race to the bottom. This will be a race to which sequel can make less than its original. What's the bigger gap? Because they're both around 1.1 billion for the first one. What's the bigger drop? I think this will make a little bit more overseas, but it's not going to be, you know, anything worthy of a medal. So then your your, your other Momoa points. So let's bring in this because this is the first time we've seen this in writing. And we've been telling you this. Yeah. Quote, none of the stars cast by Zack Snyder, including Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, Gal Gadot, Ezra Miller, and Jason Momoa, will reprise their roles in the new DC universe. Thank you. There it is. In print from a credible writer, we told you Ezra Miller wasn't going to be coming back. We told you Gal Gadot was just trying to make news and make waves. No, she, do, uh, rock, rock moves. moves. <laughs> <laughs> and the studio said no. So there it is, confirmed. And then they say, Momoa is the only actor who may return. But he is in talks to play Lobo possibly as soon as a cameo in Superman Legacy. This is one of those roles, Brian, where, and I think you would agree that when you were born to play a role, this is his role to play. But unfortunately, he's been playing this role in many movies already. Which Momoa are we going to get for this film? I think regardless of what Momoa we get, it will be reminiscent of Momoa and not Lobo. I completely agree. Because like I said, if you look at him in Fast X, I mean, he's riding a bike. He is basically playing a crazed evil rocker that he pretty much is the character already he's just not in space yeah and so i look i mean you say jason momoa has range i've never seen him show an interest in really expressing that he seems very content to make a lot of money playing himself Mm -hmm. over and over and over again i would probably submit to you that cal drogo is the closest we got to him doing something different right he's he definitely portrays a different persona in game of thrones but you know, on the big screen, he pretty much has been Jason Momoa. Like whether it's I like him in Dune. I thought he was. I thought he was dope in Okay, Conan was... but even so, he's still like a ham. 
he's still got that sort of happy-go-lucky. It's still the same DNA. It's a little more restrained because mm. Danny Villeneuve is a better director, but it's still Jason Momoa. And so I, I think Lobo, he'll be great as Lobo, but you're right. It will be somewhat repetitive. Mm -hmm. But this one is for Pablo because this article, I, I, said, I said, it even has Pablo's grand design referenced in here. <laughs> Oh, okay. What what is it? I think I know what it is, but let's confirm it. So there's a piece of the article that basically says that some people at the studio are convinced that within two years, Universal is going to buy Warner Brothers, including all of the DC IP and restart this whole thing anyway. There it is. I wonder for how much. <laughs> now that's all the Warner Brothers, but I mean that's kind of you know because the stock is not it's like has struggled mightily under Zaslav. He's trying to cut costs and they're burning cash and like he's on a clock. There's no question. Yeah. But this idea that like everything James Gunn and Peter Safran are trying to do is kind of a moot point. This whole universe thing is great, but like if they then are acquired, they'll just scrap all of this anyway and start off I guess you would call it a last attempt to do something that you wouldn't be able to do uh elsewhere or get the opportunity to do um for James Gunn I mean in terms of being in charge of something of an IP to do with it as you wish and and he took it would it save the perhaps inevitable I guess plan of you know of Zaslav because Zaslav at the end of the day Brian you said this, this is a business man he has you know stockholders to 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 uh make happy you know and 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 the on, on the current pace of what they're doing I'm sure it is a frustrating situation and something must be done. So listen, I'm all for starting from new. If what we are doing ain't working and coming up with a new approach and a new plan. And, uh, and if I'm happy to see the DCIP go elsewhere to someone who's already seen the failures uh, of attempting something like this and could approach it in a different uh, way that makes more sense and has the, the funds to make it work or make it happen. So I'll give you the silver lining, though. This thing about, hey, someone else is going to own it and reset it, blah, blah. No, they won't. Here's the deal. I think what it does ensure, because no doubt, James I mean, James Gunn no, is aware of all. If this, if this rumor is originating from inside the studio lot of Warner, of Warner Brothers, James Gunn is no doubt aware of it. Peter Saffron is no doubt aware of it. Matt Reeves is no doubt aware of it. Todd Phillips is no doubt aware of it. What it what it tells you is it's all on Superman Legacy and the Batman sequel. Because if those movies hit, and I mean hit, nobody that buys WB is going to scrap them. Nobody. Nobody walks into a billion-dollar movie and says, eh, I'm going to fire everyone and start over. So what they're, those productions are playing for their survival, whether it be in the current regime or the next regime. I like that. <laughs> because to me, that forces you to focus on the present. You don't get to... like. I get that James Gunn gave us this phase one plan and blah, 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 blah. I got to be honest, I'm excited for some of it, but I don't really care. Because you and I have said many times, if Superman legacy doesn't work, none of it works. <laughs> so I'd it's rather over. have the stakes be that, yeah, if this movie fails and if the Batman Part 2 fails and if WB's hemorrhaging cash afterwards, then the studio gets bought. That kind of pressure might breed performance. So I'm happy if these people are feeling that desperation that we have to make this movie, not the sequel, not the culmination. This movie has to be great. I like that. Yeah. Yeah.
Now, the one, if you're looking for a positive in the, in the article, there was a reference. There is one production they said is going swimmingly well and everyone internally is on the same page and collaborating great. What is that? The Penguin. Oh. So the Reeves verse, as far as we know, continues to be sailing along just fine. I, I'll be honest, Brian, I'm getting a little bit uh, frustrated with Batman 2. Uh, with the talks of Robin and the concerns we have with the actual Bruce Wayne character being developed. Mm-hmm. Will we see that? Will we get bogged down with him trying to develop this relationship? Seemingly foreshadowing um, from the first movie when the Batman and Bruce Wayne are sort of gazing at the child who's lost his father. You don't know. I mean, I think in fairness, I'm not frustrated because we don't know in what capacity Dick Grayson's in the movie, yeah. right? In the sense of, like, I've read a rumor, that, I read a report the other day that Hush is the primary villain, which would sort of countermand Barry Keoghan being the Joker in the cameo in the first, right? So, like, if all they're doing is, like, here, like, Dick Grayson appears and is referenced to exist in the universe and is a teenager, but isn't really a major factor in the, the narrative of the story. That's fine. I don't care. Like, that's great. Let me ask you this then before we, before we wrap this one up. Do you, are you, do you get, do you get a bit concerned if we get a cast for the character early on before we even get a movie or trailer that if you hear his name, do you start getting a bit concerned? Yeah, like if I see it's a pretty high profile younger actor who's got some notable credits, then I'd be more concerned because I would say that would indicate it's probably, it, it's the logic I use with the Superman legacy cameos where people are like, hey, there's too many characters and Gunn's basically like, no, there's not. And then what I said was as a defense of Gunn is that a lot of the actors being cast in these roles are mostly no names or like limited resumes. So it's sort of not suggesting they're meant to be there as like huge parts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if we get like a very notable young up and coming actor noted playing Dick Grayson, I'll be a little more concerned that like that's it's going to be like focused on that relationship as opposed to the evolution of Robert Pattinson's Bruce Wayne, which is really what we want to see. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of. Uh, I know we diverted to uh, talking about some of. Uh, Matt Reeves universe um, what's going on with DC Superman and stuff uh, Aquaman and Jason Momoa his Captain, transition over Captain Jason Momoa <laughs> uh, Jason Momoa transitioning over to the character of Lobo which at first Brian it was a no brainer and it still is but uh, these uh, these are one of those things that you you, you ask for, you're going to get it. And, and are, is it going to live up to that expectation that we all have for, for that character? Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. And we'll see you next time on the Nerd Report. The show goes on!